guys, welcome back to Magic TV. My name's Craig, it's nine o'clock, which means it's time for another video. And today I'm going to be doing a review on the Session 2022. That's right, I'm gonna do a review on the Session 2022. Because I've just come back from the session, I'm filming this on the Tuesday, and uh, I, I came back from the session on the Monday. So if you don't know what the session is, um, what rock have you been living under? It's one of the biggest magic conventions here in the UK. It's not the biggest, obviously, but it's one of the biggest. And it's organized by the Vanishing Inc. team by Andy Gladwin, Joshua Jay, and the rest of their team at Vanishing Inc. Now, Vanishing Inc. do a number of special events. They do uh, the session. They do Magifest over in the US. Uh, they do the, um, uh, the retreat, which is proving to be very, very popular. Uh, and, you know, let's be honest, M Vanishing Inc. have grown to become one of the biggest uh, magic shops in the in the world, really. I mean, they are absolutely everywhere. They're pumping out more tricks than anyone else. Their books are second to none. They're doing a fantastic job. And, you know, my hat is off to Andy and Josh. Now, regarding the session, the session is something that's been taking place pre-Vanishing Inc., or at least as far as I'm aware. I haven't actually checked my facts but from memory the session it came, uh, came into existence many many years ago uh, with Rob James and Andy Gladwin I think the session was around before uh, Josh came on the scene and they they made Vanish, uh, Vanishing Inc uh, and I, I, just to give you a bit of a frame of reference I haven't been to the session for years um, the last time I went it was a little convention in Gloucester so it was on a little, um, it was off a little, uh, in a little hotel in Gloucester, I think it was. And I think the first or the second uh, session, I was involved in it. I was doing a mini lecture. Uh, and this is many, 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 many years ago. Uh, and then I haven't been to another one until 2022. Uh, why? Mainly because I dropped out of magic. I think you guys are all aware of my personal journey through magic right now. I left magic about a decade ago for various different reasons. And I only came back pretty much at the beginning of the pandemic. So um, I haven't done many conventions for years. I did Blackpool uh, in 2022. I did the Wessex Magic Convention and uh, obviously Magic Live and the session. Uh, is now the one that I've done. So I was coming into this kind of completely blind because although I've been aware of the session getting bigger and bigger and bigger, um, it's not something that I've really kind of got involved with or, or been a part of. And uh, the first thing I'll tell you, and I mean this as a massive compliment, uh, with it being in central London and with it being uh, the type of convention it is, it very much reminded me a little bit like Ron's Day, the International Magic Convention, which unfortunately isn't around anymore. But that was one of the most beloved conventions ever and was also held in London. And uh, the session has that kind of same sort of vibe to it. Uh, so um, let's, um, let's break down what I thought of the session, right? I'm going to go through absolutely everything. Um, first of all, I think they delivered and then some. I thought it was a very good convention and it was so nice to see people out again. And, uh, you know, we don't want to talk about the pandemic as far as I'm concerned. You know, we've moved past that, hopefully. But um, but the, the point is, it was very nice to see everybody kind of enjoying themselves and having a fantastic time. Uh, which is what it's all about you know that's what a magic convention should be all about i've said this again and again and again when you go to a magic convention that you will learn more from sitting in the bar chilling with people you'll learn more from sitting in the bar hanging out with magicians than you will do sitting there watching the lectures it doesn't mean the lectures aren't going to be any good uh it just means that there's going to be people out there sitting in the bar that will show you stuff that you haven't even think thought possible it happens to be every single convention i go to one of the highlights of the convention for me is sitting down with some random person in the bar who i've never met before blowing me away with a trick that i've never even heard of i love that that's what i love so much about sessions that's why i go to magic conventions and really that's what the session is set up all about the first thing you have to understand that a lot of the bigger conventions there's something going on all of the time right so the dealer halls open all the time all of the um 
all of the uh, what I'm trying to say the uh, all of the lectures are on they're like you can't do all of the lectures especially Blackpool Blackpool they've got like 15 lectures on at the same time so you have to pick and choose which which lecture to go to right there's always something on and and because of that and and you have to with Blackpool they have to do that because there's so many people there if everybody bundled into one lecture you just wouldn't be able to fit everyone in right so they have to have multiple things going on at the same time but it means that there's going to be things that you miss with the session, it's it's constructed in such a way that there is regular sessioning time. So, for example, even though the session runs Friday, Saturday, Sunday, the dealer hall is only open up on a Sunday. They have the Vanishing Ink booth that's open up all of the time in the main hall, but they have uh, uh, they have um, uh, the dealer hall is only open up on a Sunday. Which means that, you know, normally you have those people that go to conventions and it's like, right, I'm going to go to the dealer hall and that's all I'm going to do. And it's going to be the dealer hall and they just spend their entire convention walking around the dealer hall. They don't go to anything else. They don't session. They don't go into any of the uh, lectures because it's all about the dealer hall. Well, you can't do that with the session because it's not open until the Sunday unless you buy a day ticket for the Sunday. Uh, the other thing is that there's regular breaks programmed into the schedule. So it's like, okay, so we've got this at 9.30 till 10.30. Then we don't have anything else till 12 o'clock. And then we have got this from 12 till 1. But then we don't have anything else till 4 o'clock. So it's kind of interesting in that respect because there's lots of time where people are kind of forced to hang out. And the nice thing about the hotel that they've uh, had this in is there are lots of areas where you can hang out. So uh, the main room is uh, where the stage is and all of the seating is, and that's absolutely fine. And you can go in there anytime to check out the Vanishing Ink stand. And then there's a, uh, there's a room to one side out the way, uh, which is the dealer room, which is open on the Sunday. But then there's lots of areas where people can sit down in session. Also in the main bar area, there's lots of different seating in there, lots of seating where you can sit down and chat. And then there was another bar they opened up in the evenings where people could go to in the evenings because everybody was sessioning till like four o'clock in the morning. So one of the big points, the points I'm trying to make here, one of the big things about the session is the fact that there's regular sessioning time and you really should take advantage of that. It's another video for another time, but don't be afraid to go up to people. Uh, if they're busy, respect that. But if they're not busy, you know, by all means, jump in and, and start, you know, and start performing magic. It's, it's the best way to be, it really is. Um, so for me, one of the big parts of this convention was the fact that there was regular sessioning time. Now, um, on the uh, Friday, um, so when registration opened, everybody was there. There was a real buzz, which was great. Uh, and then um, the lectures started and there were some amazing lectures in the, uh, in, in, in the Friday. Now, I actually ended up lecturing, which I didn't expect to happen. I wasn't on the bill. I didn't know I was going to lecture. But the night before, uh, Andy Gladwin <laughs> messaged me and said, hey, you around? So I rang him and I was like, yeah, how you doing, Andy? He's like, great. We got some bad news. Um, uh, we've got we've got we've got somebody who's had to pull out of uh, a lecture at the session for various different reasons. I was like, oh, that's terrible. I'm really sorry. He's like, yeah, uh, but, you know, we're hoping that you would jump in and, and you do the lecture instead. Would that be OK? Um, and, and Andy had been saying in the past he wanted to get me at the lecture uh, to lecture at the session at some point. Um, and I was like, well, yeah, I mean, if you'd like me to be there, I'd, I'd love to be there. It was kind of a bit of a weird thing because, I don't know, you know, I don't get nervous doing lectures, but I do want to be very prepared for it, right? I do want to be very prepared when I'm doing a lecture um, because I like to make sure that I really deliver because there's certain things I don't like about lectures. I, 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 I don't like it when a lecture is basically just a dealer dem. Uh, I just don't like that. I don't like it where I have to buy everything, you know, and it's just literally, right, okay, here's this gimmick prop, here's this gimmick prop. There is one exception, which I'll get to in a bit. Uh, but I don't like that. I'm, I'm not too keen on it at all. Um, and, and I try to make my lecture as informative as possible, and I want it to be all about tricks and tricks and tricks and tricks and tricks and tricks. And I always try to make sure that when I'm doing a big lecture, I change the lecture around. Um, and that's important to me so that if you've seen me at a different place, it's going to be a different lecture. Um, and so going into this, I only had a few hours to prep. So there was a small crossover with my Blackpool lecture, but I, 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 the content 
was actually quite different. There was a lot of stuff that was in the magic uh, that was in the Vanishing Ink lecture that wasn't in the Blackpool lecture. I, I tried to make the content. In fact, I think there was only one trick. There was only one trick that was in the Blackpool lecture that was in the Vanishing Ink lecture. Um, but it was an, it was an honour to lecture at the uh, at the session, and if you were there, I really hope you enjoyed the session. I really did. I really hope you enjoyed my lecture. Uh, it was kind of a weird situation because nobody was expecting me to be there, and it's always weird. I've done that before, where um, you know, like I'm replacing somebody as a motivational speaker because uh, I do motivational speaking as well. I remember getting booked at the very last minute to replace uh, one of the dragons from Dragon's Den at the business show at Excel in London. And it was the close of the show. So they had like um, some really big hitters on. And then the finale, the last speaker was meant to be uh, this dragon. I can't remember which one it was, uh, but it was a dragon from Dragon's Den. The room was packed. They didn't tell anyone that she wasn't going to be there. So the room was packed, hundreds of people. And then they just made the announcement that she wasn't going to be there. And instead, here's Craig Petty, which a lot of people in the room hadn't heard of me before. Um, and so I just walked out. They'd obviously heard of the dragon. I walked out and it's always an awkward situation to go into when you're going into perform. And whether I'm speaking or I'm doing magic or lecturing, I'm performing, perform in front of an audience that aren't expecting you. And in some cases, don't know who you are. Now, I think that most people probably knew who I was at the session, but it's still kind of an awkward situation. Um, so hopefully, you know, I had some good feedback about the lecture, which is great. And hopefully everybody enjoyed it. But that was one of the highlights of the convention for me. That was a big bucket list item. Getting a chance to lecture at the session was a big thing. And, and you know, performing in front of magicians is always a really difficult thing to do anyway. Performing and lecturing in front of magicians on a big stage with the lights in your eye and, and hundreds of people out in the audience in front of you, that can make it even more nerve wracking. But, I, you know, I really enjoyed it. Now, uh, the other highlight of the uh, Friday, and I'm not going to go through each individual event, I can't, it's impossible, but the other highlight of the Friday for me uh, was Adam Wilber's lecture late in the evening. Uh, myself and Ryan had absolutely loved that. Now, I do want to point out, it was basically a dealer den. <laughs> it was a dealer den because he went through a lot of his commercial items, which is what, something I don't normally like. I've seen a lot of people do it and I don't like it, but with Adam, I thought it was okay. And for a couple of reasons, one, that although he was working through uh, items that were um, commercially available through Volpine, his production company, the, the information he was giving could be done. So, for example, he was teaching the, uh, the coffee cups and beans, which is his coffee cups and beans routine, right? Using coffee cups and beans. We've talked about this on the channel. Well, the information he was giving and the advice he was giving on doing that routine could work with any cups and balls routine, right? And, and the other thing that he did is he had a big QR code at the back of the room. And he said, anybody who scans that QR code, we're going to give you all of the instructional videos to all of the routines that I teach for free. So you can go and watch them and, and you can make them up yourself. So he taught his splits routine, which is just brilliant. And he went to the trouble of making it up out of English money. And it looked great. And he said, yeah, you want that? You just download it off this QR code for free. You can have the whole splits project for free. You can have all of these routines for free. There's no charge. Just take them. They're yours to use. And I'm just sitting there going, wow, that's really nice. That's really nice. You're basically giving away everything so that when people were buying stuff afterwards, um, they were buying just the stuff that they felt they wanted, which was fine. But they had access to all the instructions. But watching Adam on stage was a masterclass. So he did his lecture very differently to what I've seen a lot of people do. The first 20 minutes was a show. It was basically a 20 minute show of him doing all of the stuff that he was going to lecture on. And it's all stuff that Volpine has put out. And it was an amazing show. And it just shows you that Adam and Volpine really focus on putting out magic that they actually do in the real world. Because there's him putting on this masterclass of a show in front of hundreds of magicians who at 10 o'clock at night had probably been having a few drinks and hit the audience at his performance up. Uh, and that speaks volumes for me. And it was one of the highlights of the, of the session for me, watching Adam Wilber lecture. Um, so, so, on the, uh, so on the Friday, there were a couple of highlights, watching Adam Wilber lecture, uh, lecturing myself and hanging out with old friends and meeting new friends, you know, hanging out with Lloyd and Bo and the guys from Murphy's 
uh, meeting new friends. Thank you to everybody that came over and said hello. There were a couple of, I had my family with me, so I had my wife and I had my, uh, my kids with me. I had Sarah, Thea and Ryland. So there were times where I couldn't really kind of get dragged away. There was a couple of times where people said, hey, can I, uh, can I show you something or can I talk to you about something? I was like, I am in the middle of this right now, but come on over later, I'd love to. I spent a lot of time sessioning a couple of times that I couldn't because Ryan could have killed somebody if I wasn't keeping an eye on him. Um, and I also, another highlight for me is I got to hang out with a lot of the younger magicians. Ollie, if you don't know Ollie from the YMC, the Young Magic Circle, he helped Ryan in his act. Uh, Ollie is a brilliant, got such a huge future in magic, as has Arabella. Arabella was uh, also one of the kids that helped Ryan with his act on BGT. And she is so good. She is so good. Uh, so yeah, yeah, Arabella and Ollie were amazing. Go follow Magic Maisie as well while you're at it on, on Instagram. Uh, I got a chance to meet Magic Maisie. Wayne Goodman's been talking to me about her for months now. He's been personally helping her in a few different areas. I think she's only 13, but man, she's good. She's good. She's really good. Uh, and who else? Uh, oh, obviously, uh, my boys. So you've got uh, your Aiden, McCann, uh, Killian. And, uh, and Jasper Cherry, those three were absolutely awesome. Um, Ryland, obviously. It was so great to see so many young magicians. And one thing that I have to take my hat off to Vanishing Ink with is they were actually organizing scholarships for young magicians. And that is amazing. I am so passionate about the youth getting into magic. They are the future of this industry. And seeing them there and just sessioning, it's just great. Like, I mean, I'm gonna put a, a picture up on the screen um, the French twins were there. By the way, the French twins were another highlight of the day for me. I thought they were brilliant. The entire time, they were just there in the bar. I, I love them. They took a real shine to Ryland as well. And um, they, were, they were just sessioning with Ryland. And there's a picture up on the screen right now of Ryland just sitting down, sessioning with the French twins, just there, just showing each other magic tricks. I love that. I absolutely love that. That's what magic is all about. There's a nine-year-old kid there's a world famous international magician and illusionist, and they're there just showing each other magic tricks. That is what magic is all about. That's what this brotherhood is all about. That is what the session convention is all about. Absolutely love that. Um, you know, what, another highlight for me, biasedly, is watching Ryland, you know, like running around and showing magic to absolutely everybody and, and having him have no fear and just walking up to somebody like Joshua J and going, hey, Josh, let me show you this version of Triumph. And it's just like, man, I, I wouldn't have the guts to do that when I was 30, let alone when I was nine. Um, so, yeah, it, just watching that was another highlight. And seriously, well done, Vanishing Ink, for those scholarships. I, you have no idea how much respect I have for you over that. Now, I can't tell you much about the Saturday because Saturday, unfortunately, I left my wife and kids there and I had to go um, because I had uh, two gigs up in the Midlands that I had to go. That had to be me. That couldn't be anyone else. So I caught the six o'clock train out of London, went to the first session, uh, went to the first close up gig, then went to the second close up gig, got back at two o'clock on the Sunday morning. It was a very long day. I caught four Ubers, three taxis, four trains and a lot of walking, but I made it. Nobody got let down, which was important. So on the Saturday, um, I was out of there. However, I will say there were sp two special youth events, one on the Saturday and one on the Sunday. And, uh, and, and I asked, I, I was hanging around with a lot of, my, my wife, Sarah, is in this kind of little magic mums group with uh, some other magic mums of kid magicians. And so I spend a lot of time hanging out with people like Aidan and Killian and um, uh, Jasper and Ryland and the four of them hang out together. And uh, I, I said to them on the, Saturday, the Sunday, I said, hey, what was the youth event on the Saturday like? And they actually turned around to me, or Ryland specifically said, I didn't really feel it that much. It, it felt a little, a little bit uh, patronizing. It's kind of like, okay, so what sort of magic do you do? And, and he's like, ah, I didn't enjoy it as much as the other stuff that was going on in the session. But then uh, he, uh, he, um, uh, he really enjoyed the one on the Sunday. I think, of course, Christian Grace was there and uh, uh, Luke was there and uh, Tobias Tostel were there. And so I think he really enjoyed the one on the Sunday, but not so much the one on the Saturday. So on the Sunday, the Sunday for me was the absolute highlight. It was the best day of the whole session, if you ask me. Uh, everything was really good, but the Sunday was absolutely killer. Um, 
I, I will say that I asked Ryland what one of his highlights were. He said Adam Wilber's lecture and Luke Jamey. He really liked Luke Jamey. He'd not really seen much of Luke Jamey's stuff before, but he thought Luke was brilliant. He watched Luke on the Saturday, I believe, when I wasn't there. And he said that uh, Luke Jamey was amazing, absolutely amazing. And another highlight for Ryland was the French twins as well. So the Sunday, the dealer booths were open, so everybody was going around the dealers, but there were also some, some amazing lectures as well. I wish I'd seen Luke Jamey on the Saturday. I didn't, but I've heard great things about him. On the Sunday, Tobias Dostal absolutely smashed it. Mario Lopez absolutely smashed it. Every lecture hit it out of the park on Sunday, and then some like really hit it out of the park. The dealer hall was great. It was small, but perfectly formed. You had some fantastic guys there. Some of the stuff the French twins were doing was amazing. Looking to Route 66, for me, it was the hit of the convention from Magic Dream uh, in Paris. Uh, Kev G and Colin Klaus were there from the, um, uh, from the Refractor Project, uh, you know, the, the Rubik's Cube guys. They were really, really good. You had the, Phil Smith was there. It was so nice to meet Phil Smith. Wayne Dobson and Mike Sullivan were there. Well, Mike was there. Wayne wasn't. But Wayne Dobson Presents was there as a, as a company. There were some nice dealers in there. It was nice. It wasn't massively a, a huge amount of dealers. But the ones that were there were really good. Um, but really, you're never going to... The, the dealer room is never going to be the highlight of the session. The thing that's going to be the highlight of the session are the lectures and hanging around and sessioning with people. Um, and that's what happened. You know, the uh, the gala show on the Sunday was incredible. Uh, it was it was just a really great gala show. You know, everything was just... Uh, is it Mike Cavaney that did the... Uh, who also did an amazing lecture, by the way. Um, I think he did the... He was the compare. Brilliant. Absolutely hilarious. The... Um, toilet paper routine absolutely fooled the pants off me um but everything was great in the in the gala show and mario lopez was the absolute correct choice to close the gala show because his act was nothing short of phenomenal and then more sessioning in the bar until two o'clock in the morning which is when myself and my kids went to bed and then slept in until very late the next day bottom line if this is a review of the session i'm going to tell you right now that it was an incredible convention. It was amazing. I loved every second of it. My hat is off to Josh and Andy and the rest of the Magic uh, Vanishing Ink team. They did a great job of making sure that this convention was off the charts. One thing I would like to add is I would love to see the session stay at this time of the year next year. I don't really want it to go back to January. I think it's better having it this time of the year. I know it's traditionally been in January and they pushed it back because of the pandemic and that's fine. But I think it should stay this time of the year. I think that's a really good thing, personally. But, uh, you know, obviously that's their, that's their decision. That's their call. That's decisions that they need to make. But if you haven't been to the session before, please go. Uh, if you've been and you didn't go this year, make sure you go next year. Uh, every year they go all out to make sure that they deliver the best convention that they can and they hit it out of the park. And it's nice to see a convention. It's the exact polar opposite of Blackpool. I love Blackpool. Blackpool is always going to be my favourite convention. Sorry, guys, it just is. However... Vanishing Inc. have carved out their own niche with this convention. It's the exact polar opposite. Well, Blackpool's all about numbers and a huge amount of dealers and lecturers and everything. This is more laid back and the focus being on the sessioning was just brilliant. And it was nice not to have to, you know, normally when you session a convention, Blackpool, you have to walk down the road in February in Blackpool. Never a fun thing to go to the Ruskin. Here, that's not the case. Everything took place in the same hotel. Really, really great. Um, yeah, if I was going to review the convention, I'd give it 100%. There's nothing that they could have done better. And they had technical issues uh, because the night before the convention started, vandals broke in and smashed up all of their equipment. They had a lecture go off because of COVID and or whatever it was. I don't know, I'm guessing. But whatever it was, they had, they had, a, uh, they had, they had lecturers go off and unable to attend. And off the back of that, they were still able to deal with everything to a very high level and make sure that every single person went home happy. So well done, Josh. Well done, Andy. Well done, George. Well done, anybody who's got anything to do with Vanishing Inc. You really pulled it out of the bag with this one. 
So there you go, guys. That's another review show in the bag. Kind of a weird one, this one. I wanted to review a convention. We'll be back to reviewing uh, products and doing review show specials next week. But I thought this would be an interesting thing to do, to look back at the session convention and the highs and the lows. Uh, if you were there, let me know what you think. I'd love to know your thoughts. Did you like the, the session? Um, are you going to go back again in the future? Do you agree with me? Do you disagree with me? I would love to know. Don't forget, you want to see more videos like this, like the video, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment down below, and I will be back again Monday with a whole bunch more videos. Thanks very much for watching. My name's Craig from Magic TV. Mm.